1793. 1793, page 1. Population, about 240. Number 1. The Overview. The town of York began because the threat of an American attack on Upper Canada created a need for a new capital. Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe chose the site because it provided a secure location for the capital to grow. The population expanded over the next several years as soldiers, government officials, tradespeople, and merchants came to build the town, increase their wealth, and pursue business opportunities. Simcoe knew that the town would only be safe if he ordered soldiers to build a fort to take advantage of the natural harbor created by what is today the Toronto Islands. See the 1793 map. The harbor ensured that the only way for American troops to approach the town was by water and from the west. So, Simcoe decided to locate the new town of York some distance to the east of the entrance to the harbor. To secure the approach to the harbor, he had soldiers build a garrison, Fort York, right at the western entrance of the harbor. Simcoe was very concerned about a naval attack because the Americans were only 50 kilometers away across Lake Ontario. Fort York's closest support was other British forts located on the upper Great Lakes, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, and Lake Superior. The only way to send supplies between forts was via the Toronto Passage, a portage trail along the Humber River. To make the transfer of supplies easier between the upper and lower Great Lakes, Simcoe planned for soldiers to build a road, Young Street, to connect Lake Ontario with Lake Simcoe. While the soldiers built Fort York and Young Street, government officials and their families began to settle in the town. They had to move from Newark, the first capital of Upper Canada, now called Niagara-on-the-Lake, to keep their government jobs. They did not want to leave their comfortable homes in fashionable Newark for the wilderness of the town of York. To encourage them to move to the new capital, Simcoe offered the officials a free building lot inside the town, one acre in size, and a hundred acre park lot to the north of the town. An acre is about half the size of a football field. 100 acres is about the size of 50 football fields. Simcoe also offered the government officials the chance to buy more land in the park lots at a cost of one shilling an acre, about 25 cents. The availability of inexpensive land and continued employment allowed these government officials to become some of the wealthiest people in the colony. The last names of some of the government people who came to Simcoe's York were Russell, Scadding, Wilcox, Jarvis, McGill, Shaw, Macaulay, and Dennison. Their names survive to this day as familiar street names. Government employees, soldiers, and officials were not the only ones to come to the town of York. The new town needed skilled individuals, such as builders and business people, who would operate stores, provide services. So tradespeople and business entrepreneurs were attracted to the new town. Most came from England, but some came from other parts of Europe, particularly Germany. Life was challenging in the new town for everyone. For the government elite, life was not what they were used to in England, but they still kept many of their traditions. They wanted fine china, tea, spices, and special furniture or goods from England and Europe, plus sugar and other items from the West Indies. Their desire for luxury items meant the town of York became a regular stop for boats bringing these goods. The needs of the upper classes, combined with those of the common folk, meant that there was great opportunity for entrepreneurs. Farmers' markets sprang up and small businesses were established to serve the little town. The economic opportunities created by expansion of the town improved the conditions of many new residents and encouraged others.